Welcome to our Sunday Bible discussion, speaking words of life. You already have everything you need. People of God, the word that the Holy Spirit is bringing to us today is a word on procrastination and how the enemy will derail our whole vision. Anything we try to do, he will come and try to derail it. But when you became born again in your spirit, you were anointed with God's spirit to carry out every good work in your destiny. This means, people of God, that you already have everything you will ever need. When you were chosen by God and called to bear his name, you were equipped and then sent out. It's already inside you. People of God, have you ever felt frustrated by your inability to get a grip or move forward towards your destiny? Maybe you have a vision or dream or something you want to accomplish, but you've hit a brick wall and you feel engulfed adhered, trapped, and consumed in procrastination or lack of motivation. Maybe you want to lose weight or, or just get in shape, but you can't seem to develop a habit needed for eating right and exercising. So you never seem to make a headway or get it done. Amen. You might ask yourself, will my hopes come to pass? Sometimes the enemy fills your head with if I could have, would I should have thoughts. But we just can't seem to get over the hump to do what we really need to do. What we know the Holy Spirit is nudging us to do. If you're feeling like you're just not where you want to be and you feel lazy, uninspired and guilty, People of God, you must trust that you have everything you need. There are plenty of areas in our lives where we might want to be more disciplined, self-controlled, and productive. Amen. Let's talk about some examples where we might have said, I wish I was more disciplined in exercising and eating right, taking steps toward the vision and the dream that God has given me. Cleaning the house, decluttering, attacking the junk room, keeping the office or kids room clean, organizing the closet, spending money, sleep, rest, staying in touch with family or friends, spending daily time with God. Promptly obeying God's direction with no hesitating. No doubt if you've ever had any of those thoughts, I have some good news for you today. Amen. The discipline and self-control you need to reach these goals, again I say, is already inside of you. When you said yes to Jesus, people of God, when you got born again and accepted him in your life and became a new creature in Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Christians are brand new people on the inside. The Holy Spirit gives them new life and they are not the same anymore. We are not reformed, rehabilitated, or re-educated. We are recreated, new creations, living in vital union with Christ. At conversion, we do not merely turn over a new leaf and begin a new life under the new master. While this newness is truly individually, Paul is saying much more. Not only are believers changed from within, but a whole new order 
of creative energy begin with Christ. Amen. This is a new covenant, people of God. A new perspective. A new body. A new church. All of creation is being renewed. Amen. So take notice. This is not a superficial change that will be quickly superseded by another novelty. This is an extremely, entirely new order of all creation under Christ's authority. It requires a new way of looking at all people and all of creation. People of God, God does not want our life to reflect the old person, but to have a new perspective. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit came to make his home in us. And he brought along every good fruit, every characteristic of his being. The Bible calls those characteristics, people of God, fruits of the Spirit. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you in you. John chapter 14, verses 16 through 17. Jesus said this when he was soon going to leave the disciples, but he would remain with them. How could this be? The advocate, the spirit of God himself, would come after Jesus was gone to care for and guide the disciples. The word translated advocate combines the ideal of comfort and counsel. The word could also be translated comforter, encourager, or counselor. The Holy Spirit is a powerful person on the, our inside working for and with us. The following word teaches us these truths about the Holy Spirit. He will never leave us. The world at large cannot receive him. He lives with us and in us. He teaches us. He reminds us of Jesus' word. He convinces us of sin and he shows us God's righteousness. He also announces God's judgment on evil people of God. He guides us into truth and gives insight into future events. He brings glory to Christ. The Holy Spirit has been active among people from the beginning of time. But after the Pentecost in Act 2, he came to live in all believers. Many people are unaware of the Holy Spirit's activity. But to those who hear Christ's words and understand the Spirit's power, the Holy Spirit gives a whole new way to look at life. Amen. One of those fruits is self-control. And it is in you. I want you to think about that. It's not something that you're trying to get. It's something you already have. That's a whole different mindset than I need to get more discipline, more self-control. The Bible says you already have it. The fruit of the Spirit and the greater one are in you. People of God know who you are in God's master plan. You are of God, little children, and have overcome the evil one because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. 1 John 4 and 4. It is easy to be frightened by all the wickedness happening in the world. We see all around us and it's easy to become overwhelmed by the problems we face. Evil is obviously much stronger than we are. John assures us, however, that our God is even stronger and he will conquer all evil and his spirit and his word will live in our hearts forever but 
even knowing that you might think you might be thinking uh uh sure okay but there's no sign of it operating in my life right now how do i start to act more disciplined and have more self-control the answer is you have to learn to yield to the holy spirit of god he has everything you will need but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such there is no law galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 23. people who got the fruits are of the spirit is a spontaneous work of the holy spirit in us the spirit produces these character traits that are found in the nature of christ they are the byproduct of god's they are the byproducts of christ's control we can't obtain them by trying to get them without help if we want the fruits of the spirit to grow in us we must join join our life to christ we must know him we must love him remember him and imitate him as a result we will fulfill the intended purpose of the law to love god and our neighbors which of these qualities people of god do you want the spirit to produce in you people of god i want you to meditate on the fact that the fruit of the spirit is already in you you already have the motivation determination and self-control you need it's in your born again spirit the first step to yielding to it is surrendering your will to god by that i mean choosing to do what he wants choosing his will and we will find out what his is by reading the bible his word is his will remember god loves you so much more than anyone has ever loved you and more than you love yourself. He wants the best for you and you'll be happiest when you know what he wants. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 3 verse 16. The message of the good news comes to a focal Point in this verse. God's love is not static or self-centered. It reaches out and draws others in. Here God sets the pattern of true love, agape love, the basis for all love relationships. When you love someone dearly, you are willing to give freely to the point of self-sacrifice. And God paid dearly with the life of his son. He paid the highest price that he could pay, people of God. Jesus accepted our punishment, paid the price for our sins, and then offered us the new life that he purchased for us with his life. Amen. When we share the good news with others, our love must be like Jesus, willingly giving up our own comfort and security so that others might join us in receiving God's world love. To believe is more than an intellectual agreement that Jesus is God. It means to put our trust and confidence in him that he alone can save us. It is to put Christ in charge of our present plans and eternal destiny. Believing is both trusting his word as reliable and relying on him for the power to change. If you have ever trusted Christ, let this promise of everlasting life be yours and believe. People of God, after this Bible discussion, I pray that you will come to know that in a deeper way than ever before today. When you do surrender your will to God, 
doing what he wants, it becomes second nature, people of God. It's not hard. Just say, Lord, I surrender my will to you. I trust you. I know you love me and you have a good plan for my life. I want to do what you want me to do. I yield to you. Amen. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. And this is what Apostle Paul meant when he said, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. People of God, if our desire is to have these qualities listed in Galatians 5 and 22, then you know that the Holy Spirit is leading you. At the same time, be careful not to confuse your subjective feelings with the Spirit's leading. Being led by the Holy Spirit involves the desire to hear, the readiness to obey God's word, and the sensitivity to discern between your feelings and his prompting. Live each day, people of God, controlled and guided by the Holy Spirit. Then the words of Christ will be in your mind, and the love of Christ will be behind your actions. Then the power of Christ will help you control your own selfish desires and stop procrastination. In Jesus' name, amen. When you need motivation or self-control, ask for his help and look into his word. Then follow his lead and act in cooperating with his master plan. Yielding to the fruit of the spirit is trusting his abilities more than your own. To depend on his wisdom and power to do what he wants us to do, yielding to the Spirit is following his leadership, listening for his will, and then obeying it. Not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Many people believe that to survive in this world, uh, a person must be tough strong, unbending, and harsh. But God says not by force, nor by strength, but by my spirit. The key words are by my spirit. It is only through God's spirit that anything of lasting value is accomplished. The returned exiles were indeed weak, harassed by their enemy, tired, discouraged, and poor. But actually, they had God on their side. So as you live for God, determine not to trust your own understanding, your strength, or abilities. But instead, people of God, depend on God and work in the power of His Spirit through Jesus Christ, Yeshua. The Word of God is full of instructions on any aspect of a life, how we should act, behave, speak, or minister, and follow. His word stored in our hearts is his primary tool to lead us. That's why you need to be sure you're reading it every day, and even more if you're seeking him for direction, discipline, and self-control. Remember, we're not looking to the outside for help and answers. We're looking inside where the Holy Spirit and his fruits dwell in our born again spirits. You already have everything you need to fulfill your God-given destiny, people of God. People of God, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's how you will kill the flesh, by denying it and by starving it of its desires. What is discipline, people God? Sometimes the word discipline has a negative connotation. We think of it as punishment, like you're going to have to be disciplined. But really, discipline is a blessing. Without it, we're not going to get much done in life. Here are a couple ways 
that the Webster Dictionary defines discipline, orderly or prescribed contact, conduct or pattern of behavior, self-control, training that corrects, molds or perfects the mental faculties or moral character. A disciplined life is a happy life. It's a fruitful life. It's orderly, molded, perfecting our minds and moral character. And think about this. Followers of Jesus are called disciples, which means disciplined ones. Disciplined ones. You hear that? We are called to discipleship, a disciplined life. Part of our very born again nature is discipline and self control. These fruits are in us. And I'll give you an example from my own life. I tend to have a bit of a lead foot, like most of us do when it comes to driving. God challenged me through my pastor to exercise some self control and be disciplined in the area of speed. He spoke to my heart and said, if you'll obey me, this is what God said, if you will obey me by going the speed limit, I will make sure you get there on time. Amen. Man, it was hard. I was so used to speeding. Here are some things I learned while obeying the speed limit. Oh, habits that hard. I had to slow down to 30 miles an hour. It seemed like everyone else it just flew by me. It's so easy to disobey because everybody else is doing it. I had reminded myself that I'm called to discipleship. I'm a disciplined one. So in everything that we do, in my driving goals, they change from past everyone to stay out of the way. Hey Amen. My flesh still sometimes wanted to cave in and speed, but I discovered so many benefits of discipline. When we go, when we do things God way, it works better for us. Obedience brings blessings, peace, and order. Self-control glorifies God. His ways of discipline and self-control is always the best way for us. Amen. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. People that winning a race requires purpose and discipline. God uses this illustration to explain that the Christian life takes hard work. It's self-denial and grueling preparations. As Christians, we are running away, race toward our heavenly reward. The essential discipline of prayer, Bible study, and worship equipped us to run with vigor and stamina. Don't merely observe from the grandstand, people of God. Don't just turn out to jog a couple of laps each morning. Train diligently. Your spiritual progress depends on it. When Paul says he might be disqualified, he does not mean that he could lose his salvation, but rather that he could lose his privilege of telling others about Christ. It is easy to tell others how to live and then not take our own advice. We must be careful to practice what we preach. People that now that through the word we've come to know that self-control is one of the fruits of the spirit, we already have within us everything we need and we access it by yielding to God's Holy Spirit. First, we pray about it, ask God for direction and help. He'll lead you, bring things across your path, and give you strategies. Write out scriptures that inspire you. Don't stress out about it. You already have everything you need. God has equipped us for every good work. Amen. Be sure to smile a lot and enjoy yourself. 
keep your words in line with God's word. Saying things like, I'm a daily exerciser. I love the exercise. And then seal it with the, in the spirit realm by staying close to God. Staying close to God, asking constantly for his help, wisdom, and guidance. Amen. Here are some tips. If your goal is something like mine, decluttering, tell yourself you're going to do one thing at a time, like attack one pile, and that's all. You'll end up doing more and feel extra proud of yourself. If it's exercising, <laughs> don't plan to run a marathon. Do 10 minutes a day. If you miss a day, don't beat yourself up. Do it tomorrow. Combine it with something pleasurable, like listening to music or watching TV. Remember, being disciplined and exercising self-control is a blessing. And these fruits are already inside of I have to keep saying that the Lord is telling you, you already have what you need. Everything, all the fruits of the Spirit are operating in your life and they are accessible by going to the Holy Spirit. You are a disciple of Jesus, a disciplined one. You don't live by your flesh, which can be lazy, unmotivated, and frustrating. You live by the Spirit. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 12. In this scripture, Paul brings out two aspects of Christian living that must be uh, adhered to today. We should live in this evil world while we look forward with hope. Both aspects of living and looking forward are essential to our Christian sanity in this present evil age, people God. The living is made bearable because we live for God, seeking to build his kingdom with whatever gifts he has given us. And it is that Plus one. very kingdom to which we are looking forward to, people of God. As we live and look forward, we anticipate three great benefits of Christ's return. Christ's personal presence is one. We look forward to being with Desmond. Him. Desmond. Number two, the redemption uh, from our sinful nature. We long for the end of the battle with sin and our perfection in Christ. Restoration of creation. We anticipate the complete rule of grace when the image of God will be fully realized in people and when the created order will be restored. Amen. People of God, this concludes our Bible discussion on today. Go back, rewind, and write down scriptures given and have your own study. This word was given to provide us with weapons of warfare to combat procrastination operating in our lives. And that weapon is his Holy Spirit that helps us to have self-control in an evil world. Remember, people of God, we are disciples, which means discipled one. Amen. Disciplined one. Now, people of God, grace has stretched out our hands saying, come to me. All who are laden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you have heard this study and grace is calling on your heart, people of God, I pray that you would pray something like this with me. Amen. Father God, I've been living my life my own way, and now I want to live it your way. I believe that Jesus is your son and that he died for my sins and rose again for my justification. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and help me to be everything you died and created me to be. In Jesus' name, we renounce Satan, sin, and all his works. And we draw near to God. We resist the enemy, and he has to flee. If you prayed that prayer, God saves your life. Amen. 
He loves you so much. He knows everything about you. He, know, he knew you when you were in your mother's womb and you were being formed. He knew everything about you. He knew everything would happen in your life. He knew everything you would do right, everything you would do wrong, and he still loved you. He still waited patiently for you. All right, so let's stop procrastinating, people of God, and get the job done. Get those dreams to feel those visions. Let them manifest as we work to bring them into the physical by faith in Jesus' name. Now, uh, the benediction, people of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. All right. Bye-bye, people of God. Enjoy the rest of your week. We love you. God bless you. Is my prayer. Amen.